you're just a little girl, don't do that, you'll get hurt. This statement I've been hearing through the entirety of my, my life. Um, um, growing up with a brother that was four years older than me, um, I've learned so much about myself, but the most important things I've learned about myself is that I found love in unconditional things that aren't really seen as the typical girl things to do. Um, I've always been one to do my own thing, so I'll never forget, my parents always remind me of this story. When I was like six years old, um, when all my friends during Halloween time, they wanted to be like, like princesses or like cheerleaders, and I wanted to be Bob the Builder. <laughs> um, because my brother was Bob the Builder last year, so like, why can't I be Bob the Builder? Um, so, yeah. I never really got the concept, you can't do anything because I'm a girl. That never really sunk through my head, ever. Um, so growing up in Malibu, I lived at the beach. Like, you couldn't get me out of the water. Like, my parents had to come down and, like, yank me out of the water because I would spend hours and hours just floating around doing my thing. It was just, like, my therapy. Um, and at the age of nine, I discovered my love for skateboarding. And it was actually when my brother, for his 13th birthday, got his very first wooden skimboard. I don't know if you guys know those, but they're just like the little dorky ones, like you just throw and go on the sand. Um, and I just remember sitting on the beach for hours, just staring at him so mad that he got to do this and I couldn't. Um, and my mom would just said, you can't do it, like you're gonna get hurt, like he's a boy, it's different. And all I remembered was, well, he can still get hurt too, so why is that different for me? Um, and so, when he wasn't paying attention, uh, I went with my friends out of the beach and I took his wooden ski uh, skinboard with me uh, without my parents knowing. And I threw it, and next thing I know, I was fell down, really hurt myself. <laughs> and I didn't want my parents to know that they were like, true. Uh, so I stubbornly spent the next like hour just throwing the board constantly and jumping on it, hurting myself continuously until <laughs> I finally stood up and rode down the shoreline and that was the best feeling ever and that was like kind of the first defining moment that I could do whatever I set my mind to and I could do something that's maybe even, I could do it even better than my brother. Um, in the fifth grade, my uncle got me my very first skateboarding shoes, and I thought, they're so sick, they're like Vans, they were like black, and they had like a stripe down the middle, and my friend David came up to me and said, you can't wear those shoes because you don't skateboard, and I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, but only like skaters can wear those shoes, so... Uh, for my birthday, I asked my parents for a skateboard, and I'll never forget that whole summer, I spent my time at Papa Jack Skate Park in Malibu. I don't know if you guys, it's not there anymore, but uh, just skating like all summer. So the very first week of sixth grade, I go up to my friend David, and I say, I'll challenge you to, like, to skate. Like, okay, like, let's do it. Like, you're telling me I can't skate. Like, I think I'm better than you. So he's like, fine. So we went to my friend Colton's house that had a skate park in his backyard, which I was always, to this day, still jealous of when I was little. <laughs> um, so I told him, I'll let him go first. And so he just like, whatever, like, did an ollie. <laughs> um, so then I'm like, okay, fine. I can do that and more. So I did an ollie, and then I went to like, Colton's half pipe is like five foot tall, and I dropped in, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you can drop in? I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so after that, to this day, uh, I went to school with Michael's, I mean, not Michael, uh, David, since like elementary school, middle school, to high school. He's never ever complained or commented on my shoes ever since then. So. Um, uh, even
even though I face trials from my family, my peers, I even kind of doubted myself being a girl. Um, that kind of throughout history, the workplace has been kind of dominated by males, which is not a problem at all. But um, being like a 20 year old female, I was scared that my, uh, you guys heard about like that app a little bit that my brother and I started. I was really scared and I told my brother Dylan, I'm like, Dylan, don't mention me on any of the websites. Like, I don't think anyone's going to take me seriously like a 20 year old girl, like, like whatever, like with no work experience, like they're, they're not gonna take our company seriously. Like no one's gonna invest in us. So um, even though my friends, my family encouraged me to do it, um, I'm just like, I can't like, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't think our company's gonna do well if I like show I'm the founder. It didn't take um, time until I kind of realized that if you are, confident and you have something to bring to the table, it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter anything. As long as you're confident, you can bring something to the table. And um, my favorite comedian and favorite writer, Tina Fey, uh, once said, don't waste your energy trying to change your opinions, do your own, trying to change others' opinions, do your own thing and don't care if they like it. Okay.